So, so what's the album about? So this is this is the first album, right? This is my first official, official album. album. Cause I did drop an album before this called Conquer Goliath. That's on every platform, uh, which was an inspirational album. So it's not my first album, but this is this is not my first album. This is my third album, to be honest. Yeah, and I was inspired by uh, Challenge Gambino because. I think the style of music I like, I always look, you know, I like Chris Brown, I like <clears throat> Jasmine Sullivan, I love Brandy's my favorite, Tank, my favorite, you know, um, I like Bryson Tiller, <clears throat> I like McMeals, I like certain people, so it's like, who are you? I ain't, mm. I ain't no rapper, mm. I ain't Tank, I ain't gonna be the sexy dude singing, <laughs> you know, Chris Brown dance. But when I saw um, Guava Island, I just thought how artistry is not what you think it is. It's what's unique to you. What's you? Mm -hmm. It's like authentically you. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you as an artist? Who are you as a singer? Who are you as a creator, music musician? It's about your own unique yeah. style. So yeah. I was going through some things emotionally and I, I was like, I want to put it on an album. I want to put my emotions on an album and I, you know, I'm a cancer, as they say, so we're really sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Erica Badu? Now keep in mind that I'm an artist, and I'm sensitive about my shit. <laughs> <laughs> my wife always tells me, it's okay, you're an artist. You're an artist. I used to be offended, like, I ain't no artist. Bradley down. Um, yeah, you know, because yeah, it was like uh, offensive, but now I accept it, I embrace it. I am an artist. I, can, I am very in tune with my emotions and my feelings, and that's not a bad thing, right? I think as a man coming from where I come from, um, you know, it's like, no, you know, but no, it's okay. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. So yeah. so, I, so I heard that um, when you first got this house, you rubbed your butt on the floor. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny joke. So I'll tell you the story. So I feel like when you are a man, like, well, let me just tell you, me, as a man growing up in my mom's house, my mom always like, when you get your own, you can do what you want to do when you get your own, when you get your own. Little did she tell you, when you get your own and you're married, you really don't have your own because your wife then becomes your mom and she tells you what you can and can't do, right? So you never <laughs> really get, you got to have your own by yourself. Yeah, I'm you. nodding profusely right now behind this You table. already know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got a house, it was yeah, she was like giving me rules. I was like, I can wipe my mouth. I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> I bought this house. And I told her, I said, because you you're taking away my, the thing my mom told me forever. Now I have it. And you're telling me I can't do it? <laughs> that's not fair. No, I'm going to do what I want. I work for this. Right. You know, so that's where the joke, I to wipe my butt on the, <laughs> on the, on the rug, because a white rug, if I wanted, if I wanted to, that's what it was. And so now she walks around like, oh yeah, Barry says he'll wipe his butt. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like she just takes him a little bit on uh, But it's always a funny thing. But yeah. Hilarious. And I think for all men, relationships and married, like it's just like it's not yours. You don't run it. You know, you start off strong too. You start off, I'm a man! Mm. Mm. <laughs> You don't have the energy to keep that up for years. That's like, you burn out that's quickly. Your, that's your, uh, that was on your, your skin. And it was on a joke. I gotta keep talking about it because it never <laughs> it never goes away. Because I still believe. Yeah. But it's only, like, it's wishful thinking. Like, yeah. you die out. You ever see the man just all broke over? Yeah. He was fighting. He, he put up a good fight, but he didn't make it. It was like, I always, I always look at couples. Older couples, I stare at them. And I... I want to know, because I'm a very aggressive young man. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a man. I'm that type of guy. But I feel like I'm losing it. <laughs> and I look at my grandfather, and he used to be that guy, because I've seen videos. He was, I'm a man, I'm a man. Like, now, all you see him at dinner is this. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make it. <laughs> he said he got the medicine. Okay. Yeah, he didn't make it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited about this album, man. I'm excited about showcasing this musical side of myself. Yeah, welcome to Before the Fame. This is me. You seeing me up close and personal in my in my in my presence, if you care. I always felt weird about that, right? Yeah. I always felt weird about letting people like 
Who wants to know what? Who cares about what you're doing? But people do care. I, I see people ask me about working with my, uh, you know, working with Mr. Perry and stuff like that. So I want to show them that. I want to normalize being being in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to normalize. Make it, it humanize. Make people feel like this is obtainable. It's you so can obtainable. Do it. it really is. I really want people to know it's obtainable. I don't like when people try to act like this so far away. Yeah. It's you're so not. close. Yeah. You're so close. I promise you. Closer than you think. So close. The people that you know. It's yeah. just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know who knows this person, who knows that person. And Facts. That can literally just get you and change your life around. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's like in a matter of days. It really can. It really can. And just that, it's about, you know, I've been doing entertainment for uh, 20 years now. Uh, and I always count when I first started doing stand-up. And um, it's a journey. It's definitely a journey, for sure. So I always wanted to do a documentary called Before the Fame, and I always thought about Tyler Perry, ironically, <laughs> didn't know I would ever work with him, as I am working with him, it's such a blessing, but what if you could see him sleeping in a car? What if you could visually see that? What if you could see him going through the troubles and the trials and the ups and downs of trying to get to his dreams? Would you believe then in yours? How much possible? How how possible are yours now? Because sometimes hearing a story like, man, I had to do, you know, our parents tell us all the things they went through to get to a place. I think you appreciate it different when you're able to see it. Mm -hmm. So that was the concept of before the fame. It's just the ins and outs of journeying this dream I'm chasing. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to leave my mark, and it's not just be the greatest of all times, the funniest guy ever to live, or the most talented actor to ever grace the movie or television, but trying to do more than that, trying to use that talent that God has given me to hopefully do so much more, to be an influence, to really encourage somebody, if nothing else, but to say, hey, I believe in my dreams because that dude accomplished his. I hope, I pray that if I don't, if I, if I do that, then that means something. I'll tell you this saying I used to hear, it's just a song I heard in church, it really means something to me. People like, <laughs> People be hating on you when you be inspirational because they think mm -hmm. like you doing it like for show. And it's right. like, no, bro, this is really what I mean. This is important mm -hmm. to me. This is this is who I am. Yeah. I'm, this ain't all of who I am, right? Yeah. You, you see my aggressive side. I'm competitive. I'm a man. I'm a father. I'm a I'm a boy at heart. I'm a black man. I'm, I got all these things. You know, I love chicken. And like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo wings is my favorite. Um, the ranch, ranch is like I'm a connoisseur, but anyway, um, this song always stuck out to me when I was younger, and now that I'm grown, it still remains. And it's a church song that said, If I can help somebody as I pass along, mm -hmm. then my living will not be, will in, not vain. be in vain. Mm -hmm. And that is my that is what I want to leave that. It's scary thinking about passing away and not being here. But it does make you be more intentional about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And so just sitting here talking and gloating or just whatever you're doing, like it not being meaningful and having substances, when you put that in perspective, it makes you think. Yeah. When somebody passes away, you know, oh, let me, am I, you know what I mean? It makes yeah. you think, am I, <laughs> have I righted yeah, my I'm wrongs? Right. Have I, you know, I like, yeah. yeah, I feel that, man. You know, so that was me. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Good way to think. Good way to go about life. Good. Yes, I think so. I think so. Okay, I'm gonna download this. We're gonna go downstairs. Let's go eat. Joy. Joy. So how did you like get inclined to be like, all right, I know this sounds good, or like, you know, like, or I want this in my music, or I want that in my music, you know what I'm saying? Like, how you just did, like, you were just like, okay, can we just talk, cut that off, or like, you know what I'm saying, where, was it just like your upbringing? Right back into it, I'm sorry, right back into it, what do you think, James Bond, Bennett? Everything, that's a great question. Time and, and error, uh, trial and error, I should say. I always feel like music and film and television is like an empty canvas and you paint it however you think it's beautiful like Picasso and Da Vinci and all those artists like what makes them special is not because like we admire what they thought was beautiful not because. one I think it was like Picasso has like one painting there's this one artist he made one painting 
and uh, in his in his lifetime. Wow. And it just blew it up, and now and then it's just him. That's who he is. Wow. That's crazy. So like, that's exactly what, what you saying. were saying, yeah. So, so it's not about because to know something is like, oh, this just is right. It's not about right or wrong. It's your creation. It's your canvas. Like. I think this looks pretty. I want to use the yellow. I want to use a kick. I want to use a snare. I want to use a synthesizer. I want to use a piano. I want to sing. I want to rap. I want to... And if people like it, they like it. But it's like, do you like it? You created it. When you look at the beautiful picture that you created, is it beautiful to you? So for me, that's what it's... It's not about no way to stop. This feels good. This feels right. That's more so what it is. That's a great question, by the way. Shout out Joy, first of all. This is an amazing... Producer, songwriter, mix engineer, right here. She don't really want to be on camera. Joy, can you? I want to show my people. <laughs> She's amazing. Kanye is a creative, is a producer, and Stevie Wonder, obviously, he produces and writes. But yeah, those are my two people that inspire me. And I have some artwork for Stevie. I just ain't put it up yet. But um, yeah. Who's your favorite artist? <laughs> Comment below. Let me know.